Um, anyway, uh, I, I guess the title might be uh, a bit presumptuous, seeing as there's some incredibly bright and talented people inside HP probably thinking along these lines as well. Uh, but I feel that we as a group are uniquely positioned um, because we have become, in effect, the corporate history of HP Calculator Division. We have, our experience with calculators has spanned uh, from inception, Jake obviously, uh, but many of us from inception. And we've, um, we've witnessed some of the highs and we've witnessed some of the lows. And on a personal note, I've been both an enthusiast and a critic. And, um, and it, it's the nature of my business to think about how to position products. And so I'm always in the back of my mind trying to carve up markets, whether it's a service or a, or a physical product. So the title of my talk is uh, Defining Markets for Calculators. Implicit in that is de defining markets for HP calculators, but I think um, I think it, it's good to keep the uh, the topic a bit open because there may be untapped markets for HP. So, um, in order to define a market, you need to understand the customers, and I've broken it up into four: who were the customers, who are the customers naturally who will be the customers and there's a fourth one which is a subtle play which is who can be the customers because who will be the customers uh, assumes a standard trajectory from where we are right now and I'd like to spend some time on who can be customers now some of you who were um, there in Corvallis a few years ago uh, might remember my talk regarding uh, construction estimation using an HP uh, 50G. It wasn't intended to be a 50G presentation, it was more intended to be uh, a discussion of a market segment that HP could consider, which was the construction market. Uh, calculated Industries has had enormous penetration both at the retail level and just as a mindset level uh, in the construction trade. <coughs> so who were the customers? Well, let, look around there. I mean, we were the prototypical customers. We were professionals. And I want to uh, emphasize professionals because there's another category which I think is overlooked uh, in the fields of engineering, science, and finance, and students on career track in those areas. So with the expectation that if you were a student, you would end up in the professional category, and this was just an early on, um, entry in using calculators. Why were we customers? Beyond the geek factor, and I, I, the geek. <laughs> yeah, Jeff will, Jeff will attest to that. Um, I, I went into some depth uh, into this, but simplifying it into two points is that you had a value proposition that worked. You were able to purchase a subset of a computer's power at a fraction of the price. The price differentiation at that point was quite high. Um, in 1979, I think I had I was working in my high school on a Wang 2200T, which cost around $25,000, oh and uh, I think the 35 and the 34C I purchased might have been about $350 at the time. So price uh, disparity was quite a bit. A set of capabilities not found elsewhere. Solve and some of these other brilliant innovations that happened on the calculator platform. You simply couldn't find it easily, even if you hunted it down and had unlimited budget. There were other aspects um, of the calculator platform that made it a compelling device. Uh, it was portable, uh, it went from belt pouch, and we probably got our 41 belt pouches, and it went to the Voyager series in shirt pocket format. Um, the user interface, very important. I think this has been spoken about several times today. It's composing a problem, <coughs> deriving an issue is simply easier. Gene mentioned the agony of booting up a laptop, getting into Excel, and trying to put a four-line program together to get an answer. And then in the meantime, <coughs> instant messages blaring, and Facebook is blaring, and whatever else is going. Ruggedness, it could handle uh, field conditions. That's that's how HP advertised it. You could run over it, you could throw it, you could drop it. Uh, that wasn't just advertising. 
Um, that was something, again, I alluded to earlier and um, in my earlier talk. And it was personal. So you, you had capabilities that you didn't have to share with anyone else, whether it was, uh, you know, even if you had a terminal on your desktop, you were sharing some resources somewhere down in the back office. It all comes down to one distilled factor, which I still think holds true today. No matter what, this is the ultimate test of the value of a calculator design, which is time to arrive at a solution. Doesn't matter which area, doesn't matter which category, doesn't matter graphing, non-graphing, specialty, <coughs> pocket, non-pocket. If it's the fastest way to get to an answer, you've got a compelling argument for a person to purchase a calculator. Even like Jeff said, a desk job. There is a compelling reason today to have a calculator beside your terminal, beside your computer, beside your laptop, if it allows you to get an answer <coughs> faster. So I had uh, called this in the construction world the principle of indispensability, which meant that it acted as a tool that protected your livelihood. If your livelihood is at stake, if someone is paying you for your time, and you need to get somewhere and do something, and that helps you, then it satisfies the principle of indispensability. Uh, and I use the example of uh, a cordless drill, a Milwaukee drill, a, uh, a rigid drill. You're on top of a ladder, and you drop the, the drill, and it breaks. The time to make a decision on replacement value is in the milliseconds, because your livelihood depends on it. And we grew up in an era when HP calculators satisfied that requirement. Many engineers had them on their desktop because their livelihoods depended on them. So HP, in a fortuitous uh, type of situation, followed the demographics. I've taken this from Richard's very excellent calendar, which many of us already own. Uh, but it's a good synopsis of the era eras uh, and, uh, and the different uh, generations. I think what we would all agree with is the users grew um, or mirrored the evolution of the calculator. So we were very sophisticated users and we demanded more and more capabilities and HP turned around and fed us and we followed the track. Now whether our entry point was classic or Spice, or Voyager, or Pioneer, didn't matter. But we followed a track and a capability, and what HP was feeding was a demand for ever increasing capability. So think back to the PC days, you know, you go from eight megahertz to 16 megahertz to 25 megahertz. There was a, there was a, there was a feedback loop in there. I, I divide this into specialty calculators and the general programmable series. And the general programmable series I think, again, there's been some discussion today is you could imprint onto them, if you were uh, skilled enough, your own impression of how you wanted this device to function. But not everyone was capable of doing that. And for us who thrived on it, it was great. The problem with that model of pushing a general programmable system is other devices started to appear in the marketplace that were competing in capability and our attention. So what happened after that? Price differentiation naturally uh, narrowed. Uh, computers became easier to use and program, if you consider Lotus Mac <coughs> programming. Uh, computers got smaller. <coughs> I, I actually used the DG1. I don't know how many people remember that. But, uh, uh, mathematical capabilities of computers increased. So all of a sudden, the, uh, even the capabilities differentiation started to disappear and of course now people <coughs> require MATLAB or, or whatever else and the end user changed the end user rather than coming from a bits and bytes environment was simply a end user of uh, a face to technology rather than a creator of technology and and this this trend of course has continued um, I often joke that uh, our kids are um, well, if they're content creators, they're even more so content consumers. So they're several steps removed from 
technology creators, which many of us in, in this room probably started off and still are. <clears throat> Internally, I mean, let's, let's be fair, uh, there were no follow-up products that were compelling. I think uh, that's part of what value this group has back to HP, is that we are that continuous link from when calculators not only were relevant, they were essential, and they flourished as a, as a product category. Um, and the second part is, um, I, I didn't catch the gentleman's name who had his son here, it was Jurgen, I think, and he said, kids don't know, and rightly so. They're not going to dive into something where there's a lean learning curve. And since uh, nobody, well, few people are around to explain to children that there is still an inherent value on a dedicated device that performs math and science functions. And here are the reasons why, and try it out, and let's see it side by side. So those were the internal reasons that you had a divergence. Since they were marketed to an ultra-sophisticated uh, clientele, that clientele is always going to look for leading-edge tools. And those leading-edge tools gravitated away from a calculator. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of a diversion since we keep talking about students and education market. Um, I presented a paper at uh, TUG, which is the Tech Users Group in San Francisco, and it had to do with mathematical literacy uh, for elementary school kids. Uh, it, those who are interested can check out the website. I know it's a little bit tiny. It's called bunseysworld.org. Uh, math, math worksheets are generated on the fly using tech in the back end and Ruby on the front end. But in my research, I mean, going through Piaget and, and uh, early childhood education, I formulated this idea of the stages of learning. Uh, it goes from enigma, and I obviously tried to use alliteration, so exposure, you're exposed to a problem. Exploration, you try to uh, work with the tools. You try to exercise in that domain space to gain proficiency. You evaluate, you engage with the knowledge that you're gaining as you're exercising and evaluating. Then your knowledge is supposed to expand. Once it expands, you still have to tie all the dots together, and that's enhancement. And finally, you lead, you're led to a point of expression, where you're able to express your capability or express the capability that you've learned or you've acquired through that learning process. So when we throw, uh, and, and I, I wish Charlie Patton was here, because he's got all the cognitive background that I don't have. I'm an amateur uh, who's trying to navigate my way through these waters. But it's important when you're, when you're creating a, uh, a product with certain capabilities and you're claiming that it's targeted at an education market, where in those steps is a particular product targeted? Is it targeted at exploration, as we've talked about? And if so, in what form does it fulfill that? Is it targeted at engagement? And that means that you get the rudimentary sense of the math, like Gene talked about in when he taught. You would convey that, that knowledge to a student and the student would get a certain, grasp a certain amount of the subject matter and then use an adjunct device to explore and enhance their knowledge. The last one is the one I want to talk about most today, which is expression. And I think that's, that's the market that HP and others still um, miss the boat on. And partly it's because, uh, I mean, Tim has already said that it is a mature market. We're not going to rewind time. But given the current market conditions, how do we expand the number of customers uh, that will purchase the calculators that we love so dearly? So we talked about who were the customers, who are the customers. And uh, it's, it's, all, it's almost a, um, a, a choice which is done <coughs> begrudgingly. So you have students who are guided by limited choice, adjunct study material, Gene's talked about this, I mean, TI handbooks are, are there, so uh, teachers are forced to teach using those handbooks, and so the students are inculcated using a TI calculator or an HP calculator for specific reasons, or for exam requirements. It's not a compelling value proposition. It's, it's by decree. Um, and then you have finance, prof finance professionals, TBM, bonds analysis.